Welcome everybody, my name is Miss Maskey, and for today's video I will be discussing art style experimentation and tips on how to find your art style. Now my excuse for doing this video is mainly because I just want an excuse to play around with different art styles, but I figured I might as well help in some way while I'm doing that. So uh, here I am doing this video today, and right now I'm just starting off with my basic anime art style that I use in a lot of my art to kind of show you what my usual art style is, and later in the video I will also be doing my semi-realistic style, which I also use. But as for tips on how to find your art style, for me, personally, um, as I grew up, I just kind of noticed art styles that I liked and I just tried to draw them as they were and you know as you got older you start to think about well what if I changed this I think maybe it would look better in my opinion if I changed certain things around if that makes sense it's kind of like um changing how things work and how they form, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard to explain. A good example of this, for example, is how I'm drawing my art style um, right now, the anime one. It actually used to not look like this. It used to look um, like your stereotypical anime art style, if that makes sense. Like, um, the face was a lot sharper, the eyes were huge and very sparkly and I played around with the colors too much and I tried to like copy art styles if that makes sense like your stereotypical 2000s art style with like the very tiny mouth and nose and like huge eyes and very hard shading but to me I wanted to change the anatomy up a bit and kind of imagine how things form and how they like smooth into each other if that makes sense that's how I like to imagine things when I draw is I try to picture how it all goes together and how it forms. But at the same time when I was that age, I still, I was like really into anime and I still am today. And I still wanted to make people recognize that, hey, this is an anime art style. But I still wanted to change some things to the way I liked it better. So I kind of gave it that anime mouth where it has that split in the center. I don't know. I don't know. I just kind of liked it that way. But um, I made the shading under the lip like a brownish color instead of a black because I preferred it to, you know, be smoother. And I didn't really like the dot nose as much. So instead I made it like a horizontal line, kind of like as if it was a straight nose. I also liked highlighting, and I also like eyes, or pupils rather, that stood out in like bright colors, almost like a cat's eye, if that makes sense, and I tried to make them a bit smaller. I also didn't want the eyes to appear flat and, you know, more rounded as they were sticking out, and I tried to make the hair more, um, as if you can see all the pieces and the shading and the highlighting, if that makes sense. And the hair actually works the way it does for most of my art styles because, I don't know, it, I just feel like it fits decently with most art styles. But right now I'm working on my semi-realistic style and as you can see, um, I tend to use um, not as yellowish colors, I tend to use more reddish and orange colors on this art style because I think it looks nicer and more realistic. I guess because red and orange colors make them look more alive, if that makes sense. A good example of why I want to do this art style is because I've always imagined what it would be like if um, anime characters um, had more realistic features or cosplayers had more like um, anime-ish features, if that makes sense. And I was mildly inspired by an artist called Sakami-chan. I think how it's pronounced on DeviantArt and I really like her work but I wanted to change a few things and um, you know just make it how I wanted it to but I was mildly inspired by her stuff 
I also had a thing where I like to draw eyes um, a lot. I still like to draw eyes a lot for some reason. Um, it preferred, I used to draw more cat-ish and owl-like eyes, but since um, the characters were obviously human, um, the cat-ish like eyes didn't look so good on them. So I tried to change them more to look more human-ish. Um, you can see what I mean if you go back in my DeviantArt account and you'll see that it doesn't really work that well with it. And of course I needed to art an art style to pair those eyes with so that's just kind of the art style that I came up with and I also looked at a few other art styles and saw a few art styles that I liked and were inspired by those as well. And when you're shading, it's actually a good thing and a bit of a tip to stick to colors other than black, like you could use a darker blue or red or purple, for example. Now, I didn't listen to that advice for a really long time, and I think um, my art still looked okay back then, and um, this is just kind of a tip to make your piece look more alive and colorful. Of course, art styles still look good without it. This is just something that I like to do because um, it just brings it to life more and add some more color. So like you could add a darker reddish or orange to shade for like skin and it's good to use um, like a pinkish color on the cheeks but you could like turn down the opacity. Um, this also is different and works differently depending on the skin color of the character. And I also still shade with black, especially on the clothes, um, although I'll probably still go in with like another color if I feel like it's missing something or needs something, like maybe a blue or a purple often works good on whiter cloths. I also really like to add a little bit of color under the eyes, it can depend on like the subject of the art piece if that makes sense and the character and what their personality is. Um, for example, I like to add red under the eyes mostly, like that's the base color I like to add under the eyes. And to make, like for example, if your character is like tired or hurt or sick or something, you can go in with like a little bit of green or purple, but you could like lower the opacity. So it just kind of adds that little something there. Also, I forgot to mention, when um, I use these kind of art styles and these techniques um, for my art styles personally, I mostly use a soft and very blended out brush because I just feel like it's easier and it works best for these kind of art styles. But when I want to add personality to something or make it look more textured or detailed or something, um, I'll go in with another brush that's not as soft, but it still kind of like fades or blends out, almost like a real paintbrush or watercolor kind of. And I just kind of like um, roughly go around like parts that need to be shaded. Um, just to kind of give it a more artistic effect. But as for this next art style I'll be showing you, I don't really use as often. Sometimes I'll experiment with it. And um, for me, I actually really like that kind of sketchy and gothic, I guess, style, but it's still like very detailed. And it tends to use a lot um, sharper shapes, if that makes sense. But this is like one of the fav my favorite art styles that I like to see around and some good examples of what um, I was inspired by is Tim Burton and one of my favorite games called Ib. Uh, another good example would be another game called Ross Alptrium. And there's this comic I read a while ago that had a very similar art style to this. I believe it was called American Ghost Jack and I really like the art style in that as well. But to show a difference between the main art styles I use um, and that art style, these art styles tend to use a more dot-like and pointy nose, which looks nice and it works really well with this style, but it doesn't feel as natural to me as that make, if that makes sense. So um, for the nose on this character, it's kind of like a little vertical line as if the nose was pointing out and then there's like a bit of shading under that. 
which goes more horizontally as if it's just like a really pointed more triangle nose. Another inspiration for this art style, which isn't as sketchy, but it uses a lot more bold and pale skin colors and like dark shadings, like bold and black shadings, um, is this anime I watch called Makaku City Actors, and I really like that type of art style as well. Even though this one isn't as similar to that, it still has a few traits that I like in that, such as the eyes and the very bold and black shading and the more simplistic mouth and kind of the nose. And instead for black clothes, um, when I just film in with a dark gray and then add like black shading for, you know, when I do black clothes, I just like straight went in with black and added like a darker gray highlighting. Also, if I stutter or if my voice sounds really freaked out in this video, it's cause while I'm recording with my microphone right now, um, I see a spider crawling around and I like really hate spiders and I'm hoping it doesn't come anywhere near me while I'm recording this. But anyways, as for the hair in this video, this one was a bit of a challenge because I didn't want it to look as blocky and use like intense hard shading, but I also didn't want it to look as smooth, so I used like a very sketchy shading. If that um, makes sense, it's a bit hard to explain, but you'll see what I mean when you're watching the video and you look at it. But as for the art style I'm using right now, this is one that um, it's not really as from many games or comics or TV shows, but it's one I've seen around, and it's a bit more of a masculine style, if that makes sense. Like, it uses a lot more bold and square and sharper shapes, and you can tell the difference between this one, like, head shape-wise, because the jawline is definitely a lot lower on the face, and the mouth is more flat, and the nose is more simple, but it has some lines on the top that kind of show which directions it's going in. And for the eye, it's just kind of a simple shape, and the pupil is just the color of her eye, which is an orange color. I guess the best example I can give this type of art style at the moment is from this comic I'm reading at the moment called I Love You. And you can mainly see the similarities, um, like, in the eyes, I think, and, um, well, the very simple style. I think a little bit in the nose. Um, I can't remember exactly what the hair looks like, but I tried to keep the hair a lot more simple than the other ones, um, and I used a bit of a harder shading. In fact, I didn't actually use that much shading on the hair. Um, I mainly just used a little bit of highlighting to bring it out and give it a little bit more detail. I think the other similarity between this one and that one would be in the thicker eyebrows, but the style of it definitely doesn't have um, as much detail and it's not as smooth and the shading is a lot like harder, if that makes sense, um, and it doesn't blend as much, but at the same time I really love the art style. So it's like really hard to explain um, different art styles and what their similarities and differences in, differences are when I'm not like looking at it and I'm not um, showing you guys it as well and you can't really see exactly what I'm talking about. But this next art style I'll be working on and this final one I'll be showing in this video is kind of a mix of art styles that I've been seeing recently and I definitely think it has a lot of similarities um, with Adventure Time and I was also really inspired by this artist and YouTuber that I like and her name is Lavender Town but I also wanted to add in this very creepy, doll-like, and mildly gothic aesthetic that I really love so the eyes themselves aren't really so the eyes themselves are pretty simple they're basically just black circles with white inside them that kind of add that gothic and creepy doll like style and the quote unquote nose and color on the cheeks are just kind of these brownish pink patchy marks with a little bit of pink on it to give the face color and personality and I thought the more detail hair would look nice on this because it just adds the right amount of detail without clashing too much and making it look tacky. But of course I think this would also look good with simpler hair, maybe with more rounded shapes. 
But of course, the point of this whole video is just to give some simple examples of what you can try and experiment around with, and what you do is all up to you. It looks like I'm running out of time, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you next time.